Philippians 1, verse 1 says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi. And then just reading down a bit in verse 6, he says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul loved the people at Philippi. They were his first converts in Europe. And after that, they supported him in prayer and in finance, uh, as far as we can tell, right, right through his life. And this letter is, is, is partly to thank them for their support. And Paul gives thanks to God for the Christians in Philippi, but he makes two really important points. And notice, um, if, if you're looking at that first part of the letter, he keeps using, uh, using the word uh, all. All in, in verse 4, verse 1, verse 4, verse 7 and verse 8. He writes to all the saints. He prays for all the Christians in Philippi. He longs to be with all of them. And he doesn't discriminate. He loves all of them. <laughs> it's so, it's so uh, comprehensive in his affection. And that's because there's a unity. There's a unity between the Christians in Philippi, he thinks of them all together. There's a unity between him and them that is not separated by distance. He loves them even though he doesn't see them. Lord. And there's a unity between them and God. It's, it's beautiful. And he calls them saints. Saints. To the saints in Philippi. So when you think of this word saints, you just have to scrap the images of uh, big bald men with big bellies and beards and icons and golden dinner plates behind their heads and uh, stained glass windows scrap all those pictures and instead uh, I, I know three saints here's, here's this uh, um, housewife who, who has uh, lost a baby and she has other children and she's coping with her grief and caring for her kids and she's in the middle and looking after her husband and she's in the middle of everything and she's offering her day up in a, in a little way to the Lord and she's full of grief and joy and work and labour and loving, loving God. And here's this guy that I know and he's um, a, a millionaire and he's a company director and he contrives to get a, a jumbo jet and fill it full of food for a famine in the Sudan. And he can do it, and he doesn't think anything of himself, and he's actually not very good at talking in, in public, but he, but he contrives it in the background. And here's a, a teacher who just goes in day after day and feels disillusioned and doesn't know if anything of her heart is communicating to the kids, but she's faithful and considerate and cares and practices and works i'm just talking about three people that i've come across okay and i want to suggest to you that these people are called by god serving him and are saints they're saints in exactly the same way as i am <laughs> heck <laughs> and even though you might think i don't look like a saint because the reason is that saints are not made by man, but they're made by God. It's not a presumptuous thing that you say about yourself. It's something that God says about you. The reality is that all Christians are saints. Called to follow God, called to serve God. Now how does that work? The answer is in verse 6. Look again at verse 6. I am confident that he who began a good work in you will complete it on the day of Jesus Christ. Okay. You see, to claim that I, like the guys in Philippi, am a saint, it sounds like spine-chilling arrogance. <laughs> but the fact is, it's the opposite. It, it's, it's really humility. You have to acknowledge that God has done something for you, for me, that I couldn't pull off for myself. And it's what Christ has achieved on the cross.
forgiveness is available. Sin can be dealt with. The past can be gone. My, my guilt can be finished with. My anxiety can be solved. And all those things, my, my inner situation can be dealt with in the cross of Christ. He has begun a good work in me. And he's going to complete it according to the day to the, uh, on the day of Jesus Christ. That means the coming again of Jesus Christ. He says, so you're a, a saint in the making. And Paul talks to the people in Philippi. He says, I love you. Look at your generosity. Look at the way you're moving forward in your life. You're saints. But he's not saying it so that they can sit back in their chair and <laughs> preen themselves. Hello, Saint Ken. Oh, hello, Saint Valerie. How are you? You've been brought into, into Christ. And Christ has begun a good work in you. And the work that he's begun, he will complete. And saints mean somebody who is called to follow Christ. Who despite the circumstances has their eye fixed on Christ. So it's, remember Paul said, not that I've already attained this, but I press on towards the mark, the prize of the high calling of God. God calls you here, he calls you a saint in his word and that's a calling, a duty, a responsibility but it's also a blessing, it's also a privilege it's also a summoning of who you are in him now you know there's a problem, the problem is that um, well I don't, I, I don't want to disillusion you here but I don't live absolutely perfectly all the time and I couldn't live like Jesus but do you remember uh, Mastermind? Do you remember the old Magnus Magnuson line on Mastermind? He, he, he said, I've started, so I'll finish. God has begun a work in you. And he says, I've started, and so I'll finish. And my hand on you is not dependent on your ability to hold on to my hand. Think that's wonderful. I've started, so I'll finish. And I am confident that he who's begun a good work in me will complete it. Oh, when the saints. Amen. Do you hear it? God bless you.